Hey guys, my name is Jack and I am the Avid Assistant. Now Avid have dropped an update to Avid Media Composer today, which as you can see here is now qualified for the very latest and greatest Windows and Mac operating systems. Now, since we are dealing with a brand new version of Avid Media Composer, I do strongly recommend that you create a new user profile specific to this version. Uh, I've shown a shortcut on how to do that in my best practices for updating Avid video, which I'll have linked right above me somewhere if you'd like to go and check that out. Now before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that the specs of my machine, the version of macOS that I'm running, the version of Avid I'm running, are all in the video description. But since we're dealing with an Avid update in this video, I will also show it up on the screen just now there for you to take a look at. But that's enough preamble, right? Let's get to looking at our new toys. So we have a number of little quality of life improvements. For example, in the bin sidebar, we can now lasso bins and folders. Now, of course, we we're always able to shift click, but now this will just be a little bit faster. So all you have to do is just to the left of the folder or the left of the bin, just click and drag, and you'll be able to select a range of bins and folders in your sidebar. Similar to that feature, we'll now have an easier time clicking and dragging clips in the bin. So previously to do this, I would have had to have grabbed the icon of the clip, but now we can just click and drag anywhere on the horizontal plane of where that clip is. So now I can click and drag, say for example, in the name column, and I can move that clip around without having to worry about potentially editing the name metadata or anything like that. Nice and simple and, you know, a lot less finicky. Also, while we're in the bin, users of FrameView may be familiar with the bin map that was added a while ago in the newer iterations of Media Composer. Now, this is most useful if you have a smaller bin like this, where you have a whole bunch of clips that go off the edge of where your bin is, and we can get a nice live preview of all of the clips, and we can move around the section of the bin that we're currently viewing. The map can also be made big, bigger or smaller, just by grabbing the edge and clicking and dragging. We now have the option under interface, bins. We can make this bin map on by default on new bins. Nice. Another addition we now have in Media Composer is in the markers window. So we have a new column added with the creation date of each marker. And this will work retroactively since this is an old project of OpenTier and we can see all the added markers. This is going to be particularly useful for saying your latest cut notes that you've maybe added in the markers, um, but it will depend on how you use markers and Media Composer, what your methodology is. Um, you know, it, it may be obsolete for you and not required, or it may be very helpful. Depends on how you use them, but it's nice to know it's there. Another neat little trick that we now have in the toolbox is if we have a few clips selected on the timeline, we can now jump between them. Just like going to next edit and previous edit, we can now go to selected clips. You'll find this function in the move tab of the command palette, just here on the right. A use I can think of for this is if you're batch applying a effect to some specific clips and you want to jump between them all to see how the effect looks, this will be slightly quicker um, than manually scrubbing the playhead. Now, by default, whenever we link in a media file that contains multi-channel audio, Avid will preserve the channels by default. But we now have a new option in our link settings where we can ignore multi-channel audio layout from the file. This will enable us to just bring it in as discrete mono channels and we can set our own patching once we've got it into Media Composer, further enabling more manual options to Media Composer users. Of course, the new version also supports Avid's new Mbox Studio hardware, which is a USB audio interface for both Windows and Mac, and connecting an Mbox will give you up to 8 channels of input and output, depending on your configuration and additional hardware, including multi-channel surround sound playback on both macOS and Windows, and up to 4 channels can be used for punch-ins and zero latency for mixing and monitoring. And yes, that was read directly from the What's New in Media Composer, PDF from Avid. <laughs> now while I have this PDF up, I'll also show you that we now have the ability to mount USC, UNC drives in Media Composer. This is something that was previously we could do through the Nexus client. Um, so instead of assigning drive letters, 
We could use universal naming convention for our volume mounting on Windows, but now you'll be able to do this with volumes not connected via a Nexus. So whether it's direct attach storage or it's some other form of network attack storage, you now no longer need to rely on a Nexus client in order to get this feature. And of course we have our usual slew of bug fixes. But that's enough of the little additions. As for the very biggest new feature that's been added in Media Composer, this is something that's probably been requested a lot over the last good number of years. And that is a much simpler workflow for sending your timeline from Avid Media Composer to Avid Pro Tools. So previously, when we were exporting from Avid to go to Pro Tools for Soundpost, they would export an AEF, you know, a MOV reference file, you know, an ADR list, various other deliverables. Whereas now, in theory, all this can be done in one fell swoop with the new function of file, export to file, and use the export setting, export to Pro Tools. So if we take a look at the options here, we have our usual use marks, use selected tracks. We can include all video and audio tracks. And with their export method of the video, we can send them an, a video mix down, which will be sent to essentially a MOV file or an MXF. A compression of DNX HD, so by default it will be LB here in 1080p because that's the raster size of my project. And because this is part of our export to Pro Tools export setting, uh, we know that this is going to be supported and play nice in Pro Tools. If you've ever tried to send stuff to SoundPost, you may know that exporting H.264s don't always go over too well, and a lot of sound facilities end up recompressing this stuff to DNX to make it play nice in their systems. Now, of course, we could just export a DNX reference as well as all the other deliverables, but this does make it a lot simpler. So let's send them a video mix down, though of course we do have all the similar options that we do have in AAF in terms of copying the media or consolidating it, but I don't see how that would be too much use in a Pro Tools session, so let's send them a video mix down as a reference. For our audio, I'm going to do consolidate media, however, and I'm going to give them a handle length of about 100 frames. I'll include all audio effects. I'll add an audio mix down to stereo. Include a master fader in the mix down, why not give them that control? If you have had issues with uh, mix sample rates um, on your ingest and on your timeline, you may also want to convert your sample rate to a project or to a specific designation on the way out. Uh, this is something that can just be a safe thing to do on the way out, so I like to do it on my Pro Tools send offs. So I'll do that as well. Embed field recorder metadata, yes, please. And I don't think I'll convert my wave media because I it's not something I normally do, but as I get to grips with this new export setting, it might be something I end up doing. So in Facility Guides, you can let me know if this is something I should be ticking. Now, one thing I want to circle back to that I think is really nice that's been added here is that we can include markers in the sequence. So you don't need to export a separate markers list to the sound guys. If you have a whole bunch of markers, I tend to have like a set of yellow ones for online, um, blue ones for sound and, you know, different color ones for different purposes. But for my sound timeline, I could just delete the other department's markers, leave all my sound ones on there, and then just include them in this Pro Tools session sending out. Awesome. Right, so I'll save this as export to Pro Tools, call it test. And I'll export this to a test folder. Pro Tools session. Right, so I'm going to leave this to do its thing and export the entire sequence. This is a, a locked short film edit. And then afterwards, we'll try bringing it into Pro Tools and see what that looks like. A wee minute later. Righty-ho, so we're in Pro Tools. Just created a quick project. I haven't actually used Pro Tools since film school more than 10 years ago. So sorry, Victor, my old sound shooter, if I'm a little slow at navigating the interface. But I'm just going to try and go File, Open Session, and open this Pro Tools session that we exported from Media Composer. So I'll go Projects, Avid Assist, Tests, Pro Tools session, Treasure, Open. And let's see what happens. Right, so I have my timeline open. It's exported all my dialogue tracks, perfectly fine. Only a couple of my sound effects tracks and my music hasn't come through. 
Right, now after a quick Google, it actually turns out that the reason why it didn't um, bring in all of my tracks uh, was because I'm using a trial version of Pro Tools, Pro Tools Intro, since I didn't want to purchase it just for this. And there is a limitation on the amount of audio tracks you can have in this iteration of Pro Tools. The trial version will only let you have eight audio tracks. Um, so, And this was sort of brought up in the report that Pro Tools generated, um, where it said that the number of disc tracks was exceeded. Um, so it's dropped everything below that. But if the full version of Pro Tools brings in all of my audio tracks the way it's brought in the first eight, then we would have no problem at all, since I can play all of the audio that's come through in those tracks. Um, the naming has come through fine. And even my Avid markers have come through with all of that data as well. So if I had had sound data there, uh, specifically asked them, you know, this is an unlicensed sound effects, can't be used, blah, blah, blah. They would have that right there in the Pro Tools session as well. So the feature definitely does seem to work. Um, I'd probably need a bit more experience in Pro Tools to test the Pro Tools side of this feature. But if any of you guys are heavy Pro Tools users, feel free to test and let me know. Um, <clears throat> I'd be keen to particularly hear if the video mix down part of the export Pro Tools session would also bring in a video reference into the session. I think that'd be particularly useful and more uh, all in one package, eliminating the need for a quick time reference. Right guys, so that sums up the new version of Avid Media Composer 2022.12. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, particular thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. Got a new one this week, so thanks Colleen. And um, yeah, have a great New Year's and holiday season guys. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.